Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Paul Krone and I'm a Power Platform Specialist at Macau in the Netherlands. And in this video we're going to talk about row numbers. Not because I count up it is myself, but based on the video of Shane Young, which we, you can find here. Because Shane Young created a video to track uh, football scores of his uh, sons and then have an implementation of a row number. But I do this a little bit differently. And I thought it would be a nice approach to share with you also. And basically the approach I use, I also came up with another video of Shen Yong uh, based on the for all formula. So you will see that back in this video. So it's going to be nice. I hope you like it. And heads up for Shane because he made me really think sometimes about implementation based on his videos. So very good to look at those videos also. So let's give you the whole screen and let's show you what I came up to add row numbers to a gallery. And what you will see is that we don't use uh, collections and we don't use buttons. We just scope everything to the gallery itself. And it's gonna be therefore quite more uh, easy to create and to understand because we don't have to uh, integrate or implement a lot of Maybe complicated stuff, right? To build this kind of things. So first I have a SharePoint list with just a few demo items, which we're gonna use for this approach. So I'm ain't gonna use collections. I'm just gonna scope it directly to the SharePoint list, which is always also nice, I think. Now I created a demo app and here I have a gallery. That gallery is connected to this process uh, SharePoint list. You see here the items. Uh, when we do an on select here, we uh, have a record variable where we put in this item and this record variable is connected to a form I created here, which is connected to the process and the item is a process selected. Why I use this approach and that's, that's another topic. It's because when I use a record variable with the same schema as my data source, I can basically go to my form screen from different screens or whatever as long as I use this variable and I put the right record into it, right? So this will make my life a lot easier instead of connecting a form directly to a gallery. That's another topic, but then you know why I do this. Also on this button, I have the remove from my process and just this item. And the remove will basically be able to just figure out which record I would like to remove because in this item, there is the ID of this record right so if i uh, start this and i click on 18 you see this coming in the form because this is an edit form and this variable just say to the edit form okay get the right uh, formula also nice here is that because we have this formula inside of a variable it doesn't have to look up the formula and do a call to the data source because it just uh, uses that variable schema here right so also, we can just delete stuff from our record. And now when we go here, we see record 18. If we refresh, of course, will be gone from our data source. So we know this works. Okay, let's start uh, by creating those row numbers. And what we want is that every second row is, for example, a light blue color. That's the goal, but still keep all the things we have here as a logic in place. Okay, that's the goal. So well, let's start this. So the first thing we will do, and as I said, we're gonna scope this to the gallery itself. We ain't gonna uh, have uh, uh, collections and loop through collections and do all those kind of things. We just have a data source or a collection and we do all the logic and data manipulation inside of the gallery, uh, nowhere else. Everything what we, we will do in this video is going to be on the gallery. That's why it's nice to have this approach in your um, bucket, you know, like knowledge. So we first have to do something on the data source. And of course, to get that out of the way, of course, we can filter this data source with all the conditions we like. I just do one is one because one is one is always true. It's just going to return everything. But we can apply this filter. No problem. What we're going to do here, it's basically uh, a little bit the same as a collection where we're going to store memory, only we're going to have scope formulas used here. 
and a scope formula which we're going to use is the width formula we're going to use more but the width formula we're going to use and in the width formula we can have a scope and let's call this a records it doesn't really matter how we call this because this uh, is basically a table record in this case and this is going to be available only in the scope of the width formula so we can have variables calling the same doesn't really matter because this record will only be available during this width and after the width is finished and return the things we like to return this is kind of killed uh, it's basically working the same as uh, variables only the difference is variables are placed in the temper uh, of, of the, the memory which is always available for the set is always available for all uh, the screens and with the update context it's just available for when the screen is loaded and during the screen load so the scope is then the screen with the width this is also a variable a table variable in this case but this is only available temporarily in the width formula so uh, literally there will be a memory place created when the width is started and then after the width it is killed but this is also nice to reduce the number of variables you need to use in your application right uh, and then let's first just return the records and see if this works so we have the width we say filter this uh, process thing and put it into the records and then apply it to the record and we see we have the da same data set okay there are two things we have to worry about in this approach and the first thing is that when we use a scope formula this is going to perform filmed in the width so this is going to recall all the records which apply to your condition to the maximum of the records you want to receive in power apps and that's the 500 or 2000 limitation right so my advice would be use this on active records so if we have 20,000 records and we are busy with 500 records on the current moment which are active then the 1900 500 records which are not active and are archive when we work with those 1900 500 we need to apply filters which are delegatable to not lose pagination if we are working with the 500 active records know that the 500 active records which apply to the conditions we are set to it are called in so not the pagination we lose that that's the only thing so now we return those records now normally we would do something like for all loop through those records for all as a loop and records are uh, a list of records and of course every loop has just one record plural singular and then we can return that record inside of our loop and again if we wait one moment we have the same data set the problem with this approach is that we still don't know which loop the record the for all is in right so we can just say okay give it a row number or something because we don't have a counter so what we do want to do in the for all function is have some formula which returns to us a counter right so one two three four five and to do that we can use the sequence formula let's put it on the right place so here we have the sequence so oh, fat fingering and the sequence is the number of the records we want to look through right so we have count rows formula so this will return the number of rows we have in the sequence formula and to make it really good we want to have another uh, other alias to to say what what kind of information we are having here let's format it the right way and at the end what we want to return is a row number right and let's do it right away in a good way to say okay we want to have a record with the property row number which is basically the value of our sequence value so now we will get an error on the title but if we take the second part and we say this item dot row number we will see we have a row number and this will just add up uh, 
based on the number of items we have in our gallery. If we have 2000, we're going to have 2000 row numbers. And you see that I already have a formula uh, in my test, which basically creates this blue line. Okay, let's first show you where I did this. Uh, I put this on the template fill and I just I used a mod formula. And what a mod formula does is divide our number uh, with two and only the numbers which receding, which can be um, uh, divided by two, will be returned. So for three, we're going to have one. For five, we're going to have one. For seven, we're going to have one. But for two, four, six, we're going to have zero. We're going to check this with zero. And if it's zero, we know it's an even number. And then we're going to apply light blue. And if we want to have the other, uh, for example, light, uh, light green, we can have two colors here without problems. But normally only one color is enough. So on the template fill, we have this formula based on the row number and the mod. And uh, what we returned is equal to zero. And then everything which is even will be light blue. If we want uneven, we just say one. Oh. We just say it's equal to one. And then we have the uneven lines with a color. So that's the approach here. So now we have the row number and the line fill. But of course, we want to also return our record, right? So let's go to the data source again. And let's build further on our formula. So here we have the row number and we want to add the record to it. Or basically we want to add the row number to the record. So we can do that by using patch. And just for now say the first uh, record. And then patch that row number to it. So now we every time get the first record and we add this row number to it. And if we now go, we see we have the title back again. But every time we have the same title. It's always the first record, right? So we have to fix this. <coughs> let's go to our gallery again and to our data source. And let's fix this. Because when we have the first record, we want to return the first item. When we have two records, we want to have return the second item. When we have the first run, the first, uh, the third for all, we want to have the third record. Okay, let's have an approach and how to do it. So we can use first n and then use that sequence value again because the sequence value in the first line will be one, the second line it will be two, the third line is going to be three, and so on. So when we have the first line, it's going to have one record and the loss of the one record, it's the first. Then for the second row, it's going to have two records and the last records of those two records is the second. Then the third run it's going to have three records and the last of those three records is the third and so on so this will work and because this is basically inside of the memory place in the width formula it's going to be so fast we can't even see this and it's not really a performance lost when we think of calls to the data source so this is uh, fine to do right this is going to be very fast almost just as fast as collecting the data and put it back into your gallery. So now we are basically done. Hey, you see, we have those records and we still can do the remove. Again, the remove takes the ID from the item, check if the ID exists in our data source and then just say, okay, you have to delete that item. So this will work. The only thing which doesn't work is when we click this record, or form doesn't show up. And the reason is because we now have that row number in this item, right? So our schema is different. And if we go to our screen and we look at the arrow, invalid formula expected a value compli compatible with the data source. And it's not compatible anymore because when we look in the variable here in the variable view, we see that there is a row number here somewhere. Let's see if we can check out yeah here's the row number you see we have this row number which is not in the original schema so we have to fix this because we still want to have the record variable because that is easy to uh, adjust and then just pass as that record inside of the data source so we keep clean code or 
clean formulas in this case. So let's fix this. Fix this. So where we have to fix this is on the on select. And here you see we do this item. But this item is with the row number. So we can't use this anymore. Now, for a record, we can say uh, drop columns. This item and then say, OK, you have to drop the row number. This doesn't work, right? We can do this. So we can take this approach on the record. Maybe in the future it will be uh, possible to take a property from a record and delete that. Maybe it's already the case, but I just don't know then. Uh, but we have to approach it differently. So what we're going to do here is say to the uh, gallery itself, which is the parent of our template, th that has a property all items. And all the items which are visible in our gallery are in this property. So if we uh, select this, let's see if we see all the records which are on this moment visible in this gallery with all the filter applies. And to be able to click something, something should be visible, right? So this is basically containing the record we would like to return. So let's, and there we can drop the column, the row number. So now we have the same scheme as we had before, before we added the row number. And there we can do a lookup and say, the ID should be equal to this, this item dot ID. And let's, I have my caps look on, sorry for that. ID. Look up. Top columns, parents, all item, row number. Maybe this row number isn't. Okay, two ends, row number. Did I do it capitalized? Let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Let's take this out. Four items. Okay. Let's see how I call this. So I set the row number. Unselect. Okay, forget it in here. So this is our problem. And here we can do a lookup and the uh, ID. Now it works. This item dot ID. So now it's going to return a record, which is the record we want to have returned to our variable here. And if we now click this, we will see our form will work again. And we will have the variable, which is basically a container to hold the record schema with all the properties we already have in this item. So I think this concludes this video. I hope you like it. And if you do, please like and subscribe. And again, thanks for Shane to come up with this wrong number video. So this was made me thinking about how to apply this in a far easier way. So now, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.